Okay, so this is page 53, lesson 7 in unit 1. It says for each question, um, the unit is represented by the large uh, tick marks with the whole numbers. Find the length of this segment to the nearest 1 8th. Let's zoom in on this because I know some of you guys still really kind of struggle with the marks on a ruler or a yardstick. So um, this is one right here. One and a half would be halfway between two and three. What would the mark be between one and one and a half? Anybody know it? No, nobody does? Yeah. What do you, yeah. This would be one and one quarter. Okay. Now, how about the mark between one and one and one quarter, which is right there? What do you think that would be? Anybody? Mr. St. Germain again? One eighth. One and one eighth. Okay. Now imagine, and they don't have it on there. You guys should see a pattern by now. Imagine if I ask you, what's the mark between one and halfway between one and one eighth? What would that be, you think? What do you think, Mr. Meredith? Well, one and one sixteenth. Very good. Nicely done. Nicely done. Okay. And so if I could zoom in even further, halfway between one and one and one sixteenth would be what? One and one thirty second and one and one sixty fourth and so forth. Okay. So that's simply how you read those marks. And you guys should be able to answer those questions. So turn the page to um, 54. It says, estimate the length of the segment um, in the prior question to the nearest 0.1 of a unit. Oh, wait a second. Um, well, so now they're not talking about fractions. They're talking about decimals. So halfway between the two and the three, let me pull a stick here for 10 points, halfway between the two and the three. If I was to use that in a decimal form, what would that be, Ms. Durgan? Um, 2.5. 2.5, nicely done, put up 10 points. Now, halfway between 2 and 2.5, Mr. St. Germain, what would that be in decimal form? It would be 2.5. 2.5. What's half of 50? 25, a quarter. 0.25. And notice that would correspond to the same location on this as two and one quarter. Two and one quarter is the same as 2.2, whoops, 2.5. That was a terrible looking two. Just like two and a half is the same as 2.5. All right, so you should be able to give a decent estimate with that one. All right, uh, sides and angles. It says translate polygon A so that point P goes to point Q. So we would just be sliding it over. In the image, so that's going to be the new image, write the length of each side in the grids next to this side. Well, um, so when, they, when they're asking you, if I ask you to give me the length of this side right here, from here to here, um, I'll just call it side one, for example. It's one, two, three, four. This would be four units. Now, I'm going to save you guys some time here because it's something that's going to be obvious, obvious to, to most of you. And uh, let's look at number two here. It says rotate the triangle B 90 degrees clockwise using R as the center. So this is what they're talking about here this figure right here. So again, at the bottom of page 54, 
it says to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Well, most of you should be familiar with this by now. So I'm going to go ahead and it says from uh, point R, I'm going to place my pencil on that and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and it would look like that. Now, um, it says in the image, again, I'm looking at the bottom of page 54. It says in the image, write the measure of each angle in its interior. So they're talking about these two angles right here. Well, they, they gave it to us in the original image. And they also gave you this angle right here. You know, that symbol means 90 degrees. So um, what should be obvious, and I need a protractor here, and a lot of you are getting one. I'm going to redraw it. So this will remain 90 degrees. This will remain, what's this one going to be? 60 degrees. And this remains 30 degrees. Now, and they call this a rigid transformation. Let me say it again. This is called a rigid transformation. In other words, you're just sliding the figure. You're maybe rotating it clockwise or counterclockwise. Or maybe you're doing a reflection across a line. And when you do a rigid transformation, the shape doesn't change and the angles don't change. And that's what they're emphasizing in this. Now, look at the bottom of page 55 here. It says reflect Pentagon C across line L. Well, here's line L. You would reflect it across. And then it says in the image, so you're going to have to redraw the image, um, in the grid units next to your side, you need to make your own ruler with tracing paper or a blank card. And you're going to measure, they already gave you the angles. Those are going to be unchanged, but you'll have to measure. Um, does it say with inches? Also measure the length of each one of the sides. Well, I mean, what you could do is you only have to measure it once. So if I took my protractor and I measured from this point to this point, it's almost two inches. Looks like it's going to be about two and seven eighths, I think, if I read that correctly, two and seven eighths. So when we reflect this image, what's it going to be? Two and seven eighths. It's a rigid transformation. The lengths of the sides and the, the degrees of the angles are unchanged. Questions on this? That's really what all this, this lesson is about. All right, turn to page 56. Let's take a look at this real quick here. It says, here is a grid showing triangle ABC, and I went ahead and highlighted that, and two other triangles. It says, uh, you can use a rigid transformation to take triangle ABC to one of the other triangles. So here's triangle uh, CGF. Here's triangle DEB. Which one can I uh, do some rigid, do a rigid transformation or transformations? It might maybe plural. I don't know. Um, which one can I do that with? Well, obviously this one, CFG. This is smaller. There's no way. You can't do it. All right, and then number two, it says describe a rigid transformation that takes ABC to the triangle you selected. So again, uh, they didn't make that plural, so maybe there is just one move you could make to bring it there. But is it supposed to fill that entire space? No, I mean, you could probably just tell me in one sentence. No, like, is the triangle supposed to fill up the triangle's entire space? Isn't well, if you use some transparent paper here, and then laid it over this one, you would see that it would be the same size, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. All right. 
All right, now this one here is worth a stick tomorrow. And let me uh, explain it to you really quick here. Top of page 57, it says, are you ready? It says a square is made up of an L-shaped region and uh, three transformations of the region. So you can see the L's in this square. There's one, two, three, four of them. And it says, if the perimeter of the square is 40 units, and I'm going to randomly pull sticks tomorrow and see if anybody can give me the correct answer. If the perimeter is 40 units, so when we're talking about perimeter, we're talking about the outside. We're not talking about area. So if the perimeter of this square is 40 units, what's one side? 20? 10. 10. And this is going to be 10, and this will be 10, and this will be 10. So the perimeter is 10 square units. All right. Um, what is the perimeter of the L-shaped region? So they're asking you what the perimeter is of one of these right here. Not the area. They're asking you the perimeter. All right. So if somebody can give me the correct answer for that, you'll get a stick for your group. All right, so I've talked about summaries before. There's no questions in the summary. They're just giving you um, some good examples, um, talking about the lesson here. Um, so it looks like triangle A, C, B. Um, oh, I'm not sure. Oh, they give you the measurements in each one, the, the um Degrees of the angles are going to remain unchanged. The sides, three, three, are going to remain unchanged. And they give that information to you in that little chart. Um, glossary terms, corresponding and rigid transformation. Make sure you fill those out. You should know what corresponding angles are. We've talked about those before, actually. And the rigid transformation, I explained that just a few moments ago. So here's our practice problems. Is there a rigid transformation taken the rhombus P to Q, P to Q? Explain how you know. Is there a way to do a rigid transformation from P to Q? All right, that should be pretty obvious by now. And the next page, page 60, I already talked to you about this. This is the one where don't do it in the book. I'm going to give you the handout. And... Um, uh, I do want you to do C. It says reflect the shape over the line shown. Well, here's the shape and here's the line. Looks like they call it I or J, whatever that is. So you would reflect it over that. And that would be it. Now, I'm going to give you guys those two handouts. There's also one other assignment that is due today. And it is on the Google Classroom. And have any of you ever used ed puzzle you ever heard of that yeah. before yeah. some of you have okay so what it is it's a series it's a video it could be anywhere from three minutes to i don't know maybe 15 minutes long um and the video will pause and ask you a question about what you've just been listening to it doesn't save the questions till the end of the video as you're watching the video maybe you're two minutes in it'll stop and ask you a question and then you answer it and the link to that Ed Puzzle, which is about, I think for you guys, it was about reflections, is on the Google Classroom. So uh, that is due today. When I say today, it's due by 11.59 tonight. Now, ideally, you just want to get it in class, done in class today. Um, if all of you get on at the same time, of course, the bandwidth might not work so well. So I wouldn't do that if I were you. But uh, you will need earphones. And uh, I've got a few in the back of the room, but if you have to go to your room and get your earphones, then, then I'll allow you guys to do that. And so let me end this video.